Hey, good afternoon. Um, yeah, thank you, Jim, for remembering the name of the company. Hopefully it helped looking at me. Um, yeah, so as mentioned, my name is Dan. I'm the engineering manager uh, of the platform team at Night4 AI. Um, Night4 is a cloud DLP company, kind of stole my first slide as well. Um, basically, we grab data from wherever it lives, um, and we try and see if there's anything sensitive inside. So API keys, social security numbers, um, your doctor's diagnosis, diagnosing you, um, whatever it might be. And here's just a super quick uh, diagram of what we try and do. We take kind of input on the left, could be text, could be files. We run it through the detection engine, and then we just do something, you know, whatever we have been configured to do. That might be notify the user that they have infringed company policy. It might be delete that file. It might be just inform the security team um, or display it on a dashboard, you know, whatever they want. We support a bunch of files um, to do extraction on. You know, you can filter on each one. I only want to scan PDFs. I only care about Microsoft Office files. Or you can exclude them. You don't want to scan images. Um, and so we also provide all this through the API or different storage platforms. So we have all this kind of complexity that lives in Nightfall. How do we configure what to scan for, what to do when we find something, um, where should we scan, where do we present those digestible results to the end users? Uh, and I guess that's why they invited me up here. Uh, we use CockroachDB for all of those things. <laughs> um, and so uh, I'm going to go through kind of how we configure, configure our product, how we collect metrics for our API, um, and then how we produce our dashboard to show uh, what we found. Um, but why have we chosen Cockroach? For us, I think um, we're definitely one of the smaller engineering orgs um, presenting here today. And for us, um, it really allowed us to replace a lot of our single purpose data stores. And so um, where someone had chosen a particular NoSQL store or a particular time series store that they liked, they became the expert. However, we as an organization, we really needed to become uh, able to support them. And so it was much easier for us to pick a data store that could do most of the things pretty well um, and, so, and then support that data store, as I'm going to talk about. And then we can help out with on-call, we can help out with architecture diagrams, we can help out with PR review, rather than really relying on that single source of truth. Um, or you know, knowing a particular flavor of SQL or some particular uh, no document data store. So let's first talk about product configuration. Um, this was the first thing we introduced uh, Cockroach for at the company. And we have all these detectors, we have these inclusions, exclusion rules. Um, outcomes to manage, and we use Cockroach for all of that as well. Um, this is a kind of a quick diagram. It's a little bit simplified of what we do, but we, uh, we store the detectors, what has been configured, we store the policies, what we should do um, in two different Cockroach data stores. The users configure them through our UI via GraphQL. That's pretty much the only writes that happen on these databases. Um, however, we, uh, all of the scanners interact with them extremely frequently. They do a lot of reads. They need to know what to scan for and what to do when they find something. So our approach for configuration um, leverages a lot of the uh, JSON columns that Cockroach provides. We want to be able to um, have extremely flexible schemas. We don't need to uh, run uh, schema migrations to test out new product features. Um, we just store all of these configuration in JSON blobs. Um, and that allows us to move much faster, to try out new things. Uh, we also use uh, transactions pretty heavily, as I mentioned up here, um, because uh, then we can have an audit trail. So we know what da data was scanned with what version of what policy, um, rather than having any inconsistency problems like uh, with, say, Cassandra, where you don't know when the read or the write has been accepted. And finally, um, if we were to go multi-region or even have to do geo-sharding, um, that should work for us hopefully relatively easily out of the box. You know, we already use Cockroach um, to scale up and scale down our, our cluster sizes as need be, and so adding nodes and removing nodes is pretty simple. And we hope that would be the same across geos and across regions as well. Cool. Um, our next use case, we're going to talk about how we use metrics at nightfall with CockroachDB. 
and in particular, we monitor our API usage quota. So we provide um, a DLP API. You can send us any text or any file, and we're going to do our best to scan it for you, tell you what's inside. Um, but this one is a little bit simpler diagram-wise. However, we have got a cache now involved, um, and that is because we high, have a really high queries per second as we um, have to authorize each individual request as well as monitor the usage and the quota. So for every request, we have to write a log to say how many bytes it was. We need to bill you for your quota correctly. Um, but we also need to make sure that you haven't gone over your monthly quota. And so what we do is we generally batch those all up um, in the cache and then flush them to Cockroach as a single insert um, it, using the cache as well to, to run a rough quota calculation. So we're not going to give you an exact answer of whether uh, how much quota you have left for that month. We're just going to see, are we going to be permissive and let this request uh, run through? Uh, so that is you know, one way that we try and protect our CockroachDB um, from having to run a lot of inserts and then also have to do a lot of reads of that correct information. Um, I think this has come up a couple times already. I, I, I saw it in the Hard Rock talk as well, but we, as of system time, is a really big performance increase for the system as well, um, just as because the coordination is no longer required to get those rough quota estimates. Um, so we can tell just to run the query on that individual node. We can um, update the cache as needed um, and not have to entirely lock our entire cluster to, to get that correct information. Um, and lastly, I think uh, we just added this in a couple weeks ago as we upgraded to Cockroach 22 and um, added row level TTL. So we don't care, care about quotas anymore once your month has passed. We used to have a, a cron job that ran in temporal to clean them up, and now we just can have the data store do it for us. So it's very cool that we can just say like, okay, you know, we, we can deal with the data on our side, making the table smaller um, and making our queries run faster. And we also don't lose any of that data, though, because we use the change data feed, flush it into Kafka, flush it into the data warehouse, kind of move that data out of production as quickly as possible. It's great. Great. Um, and now onto our final use case, uh, product analytics. Um, so for this one, we have like a really high number of writes. So all of these scanners, they basically write when they find anything into an individual analytics service which writes into a DB. But we also have more complicated queries as we want the customers to be able to visualize, filter, um, and act upon events that they haven't already. So for this one, we definitely spend a lot of time on query optimization um, and thinking really hard about what our primary keys should be. Uh, we actually did a fair amount of um, experimentation for this one. And I think we also found something similar that it was very important to have the timestamps in a compound primary key for this um, as we were doing a lot of time window selection. And so customers generally care about what's happened in the last week, 30 days, um, and therefore having that pri compound primary key really helped us avoid those hotspots. Um, we also, um, as we do so much joining, and filtering, um, but our requirements are relaxed because we just have to show a point of time of what has happened. We generally just pull that data with the most simple select query as possible and then do the filtering on the application code and the joining in the application code, again, to try and offload that performance from the data store where we don't really need it anymore. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, as we have learned at Nightfall, um, success is super helpful. I'm going to give out a shout out to my success rep as well, um, Theodore. Uh, he has given us amazing explanations, deep dives, um, recommendations, you know, primary key. Yeah. Woo! Um, so I, I just, you know, reach out to support early and often. If you ever have a question about Cockroach, I would highly recommend that. Um, 
And yeah, so we can use, with his help, we can use CockroachDB for product configuration, metrics, and um, product analytics. And we just have to tailor our use case for each one. So we just have to make sure that we can support the database in whatever role it is playing here at Nightfall. Um, and then we can get away with a lot. You know, I think one of the other things that I was really surprised by is how much performance we can get out of the database with just this relatively little um, assistance and tuning. Um, I, and then finally, we just have improved our operations. Um, having a single data store that we just pick off the shelf means our architecture discussions are way shorter. We don't have um, someone arguing for an eccentric data store. Um, we all can support each other on call. Um, we can help out with each other's services. We can uh, PR review their SQL statements. Um, and then we can onboard new engineers a lot more quickly. They generally have some experience with a relational database with SQL, rather than a particular flavor of tabular data store or whatever it might be. Um, but I think the last point that I want to say is that this only really works if you know the constraints of the product you're using. And so along the way, we have had to support the database in um, a few different ways just to make sure that we can be successful with this default um, approach. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>